Okay, so, in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there are 15 Sheikah Towers that divide Hyrule into 15 regions. Each of these regions are vastly different from one another, and so in this video, I am going to be ranking each region from worst to best. This video is obviously just my opinion, and so if you don't like the order in which I rank the regions, then you can just leave a dislike and an angry comment. I could not care less. Alright, so the worst region in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the Gerudo region. Not to be mistaken with the Wasteland region, the Gerudo region doesn't really have any memorable locations at all. I mean, this region is entirely made up of some boring snowy mountains, and you'll occasionally run into a pack of wolves, but other than that, the Gerudo region isn't too much fun to spend time in. The Lake region is an extremely plain region, as other than Lake Hylia and the Bridge of Hylia, this region is basically just a plain field of grass that I think could have had a few more locations to fill up the area. Don't get me wrong though, riding on a pony across the Bridge of Hylia is incredible, plus this region is home to the Giant Horse, which is a neat little touch. Coming in at the 13th spot is the Hebra region. Climbing all the way up to the top of the Hebra Mountains and shield surfing all the way down never gets old. Snowball bowling at Pondo's Lodge is always fun, and just talking to Pondo and hearing all these horrible snow puns is pretty funny. It just sucks that there's no village or town in the Hebra region, as this region is massive and there's nothing really going on, but it's still fun to explore the Hebra Mountains. The Tabantha region is a snowy region that is located directly to the south of the Hebra Mountains, and is home to the Ritos. The Rito village is one of the most unique locations in Breath of the Wild, as the village is perched up on a huge spiral that is surrounded by a massive lake. Just north of the Rito village is the Flight Range. The Flight Range is always nice to stop by every now and again, and that's really it for the Tabantha region. Home to Kakariko Village, which is my favourite village in the game, the Dueling Peaks region is made up of a valley and two huge mountain peaks, as the name implies. Climbing up the Dueling Peaks for the first time was a painful, unforgettable experience, as it was damn hard to climb anything with not even two circles of stamina, let alone two of the biggest mountains in the game. There's a neat forest area that has a pretty little lake, and Kakariko Village is just such an amazing secluded area of Hyrule that I just love spending time in. The Ridgeland region is a very weird region, as a good portion of the place is covered in these disgusting looking mushrooms. But Satori Mountain carries the region, as it's basically the only thing memorable about Ridgeland. This gorgeous mountain was added to Breath of the Wild in tribute of Satori Iwata, who was an ex-president of Nintendo and sadly passed away while Breath of the Wild was being developed. Occasionally, the top of Satori Mountain will glow, which means that the Lord of the Mountain, which is this thing, has stopped by. Also, atop the Ridgeland Tower, there's this cool little gliding minigame that's fun to go back to every now and again. There is just so much going on in the Woodland region. You've got the Korok Forest that once you finally get to is an awesome location that has so much to offer, from the Master Sword to incredible side quests. Then there's the Five Flow Ruins, which is a place that no one really talks about that is one of the most unique locations in Hyrule. And the Woodland region is also home to the Forgotten Temple, which is this sick underground temple that is full of guardians. And once you complete all 120 shrines in the game, the shrine inside the Forgotten Temple gives you the Wild Armor Set. And even though this armor set does doesn't look too good, it doesn't matter. The Hatino region has so many memorable locations, from Hatino Village to Mount Lanaru, from the ancient tech lab to Ebon Mountain. Even though I'm more of a Kakariko Village person myself, Hatino Village is a lovely place, and the fight against Nidra atop Mount Lanaru is my favourite boss fight in the game. Also, I don't know why Mount Lanaru is in the Hatino region, but yeah, anyways. The Hatino ancient tech lab is home to Pura and Simon, who are both great NPCs, and Pura giving you upgrades to all your runes at the start of the game from inside the lab is just the cherry on top. The Wasteland region comes in at the 7th spot on the list. I don't know why this region isn't called the Gerudo region, but it doesn't really matter. Riding across the Gerudo Desert on a sand seal never gets old. The Karakara Bazaar and Gerudo Town are such lively villages. Then there's the Yiga Clan hideout, which was so fun to play through for the first time. Having to stealth your way through the hideout was really intense, and while the boss fight against Master Koga was really easy, it was still fun. The Lanaru region is huge and has a lot to offer. There's Tingle Island Far East, a huge wetland to the west, and Zora's Domain. Zora's Domain is one of the best looking locations in the game. King Dorofan and Sidon are awesome characters, fighting the Lionel that was just chilling on top of Polymus Mountain for the first time was terrifying, riding up waterfalls is so satisfying and I could go on for ages. 
The Faron region is a beautiful rainforest that is full of life. Just riding around on my horse on the path and looking at the lush environment while I'm riding on a pona is awesome. And then there's Lawlin Village, which is such a chill place that I just want to live in. Even Tide Island is also a part of this region and is the best shrine quest in the game. Also, I nearly forgot that right under the Faron region tower is where I encountered my first Wizrobe, and I just remember struggling so much to defeat him. And then once I finally defeated him, I got his stupid wand and it broke like two minutes later, which pissed me off so much. Visually speaking, the Akala region is the best region in the game. The autumn-like colors found throughout the region are simply gorgeous. But it's not just the visuals that make this region so good. There's Skull Lake, which is this cool looking lake that's shaped like a skull. The Rist Peninsula is awesome. In the top right corner of the region, there's the Akala Ancient Tech Lab that's home to Robbie, who is just such a funny and outgoing character. Then to top it all off, there is Tarrytown, which is the best side quest that I have ever played in any video game ever. The Great Plateau acts as the game's tutorial, and is quite possibly the best and most enjoyable tutorial in the history of video games. As soon as you step out of the Shrine of Resurrection, the game gives you a look at Hyrule, and when I saw that shot for the first time, I was in pure shock. You then go speak to the old man, who ends up being a ghost of the freaking king. From there, you go and complete four shrines to unlock your runes, then you get the glider and you can then explore Hyrule however you want. The Great Plateau does an amazing job at teaching you everything you need to know about the game without holding your hand, which I loved. In the Olden region is Death Mountain, which is this massive cool looking volcano. The Gorons live right outside Death Mountain, and not to be racist or anything, but the Gorons are by far the best race in Hyrule. Seeing them rolling around everywhere just makes me smile. Trying to make my way to Goron City for the first time is something that I will never be able to forget, as my dumb 11 year old self could just not figure out that I needed to craft a dish so that I could become resistant to the heat. And so I just kept running and gliding up Elden Canyon in hopes that I could get to Goron City, and just kept on dying and dying and dying and it's just pretty funny to think back on. Finally, the best region in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is Central Hyrule. Hyrule Castle is the main reason why I love this region so much, as you can just spend so much time in Hyrule Castle, exploring every nook and cranny. But Central Hyrule is also home to the Colosseum, which is a sick location that sadly no one talks about. Then there's just traveling across the beautiful grass plains of Central Hyrule. Riding on a pony while being chased by guardians is such simple fun, and having to climb up the Central Hyrule Tower for the first time to activate it, while trying to avoid being killed by guardians was so rewarding once I finally managed to do it. So that's my rankings of the regions in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me on anything that I said, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel for more Nintendo content, and yeah, thank you for watching.